Hey guys, I wanted to show you a couple things on the um, Samsung Nexus S with Android 4.2. Now, just a disclaimer real quick, this isn't supposed to have 4.2 on it. Um, Google says they officially only support up to 4.1, which 4.2 is still considered Jelly Bean, which is um, the same as 4.1, but it has some pretty nice feature upgrades to it. So, disclaimer, this phone's not supposed to have this operating system, hence the fun little issues you see like that. Uh, it's supposed to say 609, and instead it is chopped off. So let's get into um, a couple of things I talked about in that Google Plus post. I'll link to it at the bottom of the video in case you missed it there. Um, so first off, right off the bat, first experience is uh, lock screen. Now you notice in Jelly Bean you also had this lock screen, and you could swipe to the right to unlock. Um, unless you were on the Nexus 7, in which case you could swipe to the right or down to unlock, but you could swipe up to go to uh, Google Now, and you could swipe to the left to go to the camera. Now, now swiping in any direction goes um, just to unlock it. So, I did some accidental palm swipe, um, like pretending that, you know, if it was in my pocket or if it was my palm, and it doesn't seem to unlock accidentally too many times. So if you're pulling it out of your pocket, or if it was just sitting around in your pocket, the only way for it really to unlock is if you directly touch the um, the middle and then swipe. If it if the touch comes from over here, it's not going to do it. If it comes from over here, it might do it. Um, it just seems less likely that there's going to be accidental um, opening unless you actually tap in the middle and then swipe out. So unlike HT, the older versions of HTC Sense, where um, <laughs> pulling it out of your pocket would swipe the screen down, which would unlock it. Um, or just, you know, riding around your pocket would do that, or putting it in your pocket would do that, depending on how you put it in your pocket. So another thing is, you see this nice clock. Um, this is one weird thing. I think, if you look, that's all the room we get for lock screen widgets on this device, which isn't even big enough for the clock. Now, you can pull that down, and you get more room. You can see my other clocks with other time zones, and we have weird text rendering there. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure... Not sure what the deal is, so that's that's kind of an issue. The other thing is, since you can't get to the clock this way, you can actually just swipe your whole screen over. Let's try that again. You get to the camera, not the clock, the camera, and that is the camera. Um, it's pretty cool. One related thing with the camera is the gallery. There's a new um, photosphere mode. I'm not going to demo that because it's pretty slow on this device, but I have a photosphere I've downloaded. So we can go into Photosphere mode and uh, actually check that out. So everything's actually pretty smooth on this device. Um, it's just, you can tell that it doesn't have a lot of RAM. So it can't run a whole lot of stuff in the background. But zooming, panning around, spinning around in this Photosphere is really nice. One, um, one new thing they added was this tiny world. So it's an editing mode. You tap that icon, or tiny planet. And it actually takes that photosphere we were just looking at, and it wraps it around and makes it look like it is a planet. Then you can also apply some more editing effects, like if we do a um, instant, which is like a a uh, Polaroid type filter. Then hit save, it'll save it to the gallery. Now here it actually is rendering the photo, so I think the limited uh, single core processor is what makes this take a while. Um, do 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 do. But, once it's all rendered, it's actually rendering in full resolution. Because this photo is, you know, many, many megapixels, because it's many full-size photos stitched together. And then you have your full full picture here, and you can zoom in. And it's actually, I don't know if you can tell this in the video, but it's actually really high quality. Um, it's really nice. So there's that. Um, what else was new... We have, oh, this little animation going between notifications and quick settings. It's kind of a nice little flip animation. Um, you also see that if we go into the clock here, which is, I'll show you some cool stuff here, but let's say we set a 30 second timer. Um, you see that little flip animation there too. So that's kind of a nice effect. 
So this clock app is another thing I was talking about I really love, and especially the alarms interface. Um, here are all my different alarms. I have different times I get up on different days. And you can see they're switched on. If I wanted to switch one off for a day or whatever, I could um, switch it off. Um, I can pull it down to see the details. And you can see which days it's repeating on. I don't know if you can see this in the video. It's not focusing very well. But you can see which days it's repeating on. You can tell it uh, what um, song to do. You can say, let's you know, put a label on that. And it's very slick. Um, I, I just really, really like this alarm interface. I don't really know why I love it so much. It's just, it seems really simple to set a new alarm. Let's say you want one to go off at 12.30 uh, p.m. And the, the icons, or the, um, the number pad, only highlights what numbers you can type in. So I can type in 12.30, and then you have to choose an a.m. or p.m. before you can hit OK. Um, then it adds it to it. So if I want to go off just a one-time alarm, it's set for 18 hours from now, it'll go off. Um, I can switch it off for now, then switch it back on later, but it'll save the alarm there for now. It's just really slick. And then you can get to the rest of the app, you just tap the little top left icon, and you're back in the rest of the app. Um, you have a stopwatch. Really nice, really fast little stopwatch. Um, I believe if you get out of the app, it actually puts a stopwatch up here and it keeps timing. You can actually do the lap and it'll add laps to it, which is slick. You can stop it from there, swipe it away. Pretty nice. Um, another new thing in Android 4.2 is the Gmail app. The default um, Gmail app has, let's find... Um, let's go into this Amazon. It has pinch zoom now, and uh, better HTML email rendering. Um, so we're going to show the pictures in this. This is a Black Friday email from Amazon. Lots and lots and lots of images. It's pulling them down now. Um, some interesting rendering going on. I don't know why it's looking weird. But it has pinch zoom. Um, you can also double tap to zoom in on a certain area. Let's see if we go sideways. If we get a little bit better. Yeah, this email looks really weird. I don't know what the what the deal is, but yeah. So you have nice pinch zoom. Yay. Finally, right? <laughs> um lots of little minor improvements to the Gmail app, but you can read about those somewhere else. Anything else that I've noticed? Oh, multitasking. So if you hold the home button down, which is the equivalent in this version, or on this phone, of um, hitting the multitasking button, you go into the multitasking app. So let's go back to my Gmail. Now, when you were in an app before, and you would hit the home button, or hold, hit the multitasking button, that app would stay here, and it would overlay it um, with a dark overlay and show you the other apps you could switch to. Now, it's a little different. It actually throws the, the thumbnail down here, or like it shrinks the app down, down here, and then the um, icon and text slide in from the left. It's really slick. Um, one of those really little improvements, but it just makes it really, really fancy. Um, I really like it. You can still swipe to close apps. Um, one difference now is that you can swipe to close your currently open app, but then if you hit the multitasking your home button, you go back to the home screen. Um, it also it uses the uh, wallpaper for that background instead of the currently open app. Um, now if you get to the home screen, oops. So the difference is now, okay, let's go back there. The difference is now the only app that I have open is the camera, and if I press and hold the home button, instead of it saying no recent apps, it actually shows the camera app. And of course it just looks black because there is, you know, it's sitting on a black surface. Um, so here, let's go to a different app to better demonstrate that. Let's open back to Gmail. So I press and hold the home button in here, and now there are no other apps open. But instead of saying no recent apps, it just shrinks it down and shows me that that's the only one open. So it actually lets you know that there's nothing else open, but it also lets you just tap right back to it. Or, if you want, you can hit the multitasking button and swipe the current app away and get back to the home screen. So a nice little improvement there. Um, text rendering is better. You can't really tell 
on this video, of course, because it's not very focused. Um, some other stuff I guess I can show you the about phone and make sure you know I'm on actual. Oops. I'm on actual. Uh, there you go. About phone. Jelly Bean 4.2. You can see 4.2 Jelly Bean. Get some jelly beans to flick around here. Yay. Um, I guess I can show you what I mean about it being slow. Some people are saying, oh, well, it doesn't look very slow. So I'm going to open up some apps that I use frequently in Gallery, Currents, Google Currents. And you can see it just takes a while to load everything in here. Um, which maybe that's because I got used to the Galaxy Nexus. But... Um, so I'm opening these apps, leaving them open in the background, and then going back to the home screen. See, like this, this is uh, Google Maps. Um, takes quite a while to do stuff. I'm saying it was updated to the latest version. It's going to zoom in to where we are. Now you can see where I live. Yay! Or where my parents live, rather. Oh, oops. Hit the home button. Get out of here. Go back. I didn't mean to hit you. Skip. Don't do that. Oops, I just hit currents again. So this is where it lags behind you. It doesn't visually stutter or lag, but it just kind of lags behind what you're doing sometimes. Um, let's open up the People app, and then I'll show you... Oops, mis mistapped there. Open up the People app. So again, it just takes a while to load stuff. Um, again, disclaimer, Nexus S, 1 GHz single core... Um, processor. I think only 512 megabytes of RAM. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, so here's if we now if we go to the multitasking and go to open up something we had open just a few minutes ago, uh, Gmail. It opens up fine. Let's go to Currents. Eh, okay, so it opened up all right. And go into an article here on Currents or something. Open up a YouTube video. So here's YouTube. Going to full screen here. I think this should be pulling down over Wi Fi. And it is, but a really low Wi Fi signal. Okay, so we got a nice little Verge going here. Verge, please don't sue me for copyright infringement. I'm just showing how awesome you guys are. Um, so we're loading in high quality. It actually looks pretty nice. Let's um, hit the home button. Now let's try to open up Google Maps again. So we were just in Google Maps a few minutes ago. And we have to wait again. So I guess that's what I mean when, it's, um, when I say it's slow. It's not that it's laggy or unresponsive, it's just that sometimes it feels like I have to wait around for it to catch up with me. Um, which again, it's understandable. It's doing so much with just the 1 gigahertz single core processor and the 512 RAM. So, it's, um, it's alright. And besides the small, um, text rendering issues with, uh, where, where it didn't account for a big enough screen, or this small of a screen, rather, and on the if you look on the lock screen. Besides those weird issues, and with lock screen widgets here, how I only get that much room. Um, besides those two issues, like it really, it really is a better experience, I think, on the um, Nexus S than say Android 4.0 or 4.1. So a little bit of a bummer that they couldn't have officially supported it, but I do kind of understand why. It, it, it's so far behind in terms of processor specs and screen size and everything um, that it would be hard for them to maintain Android 4.2 for um, this phone as well as the current generations of phones. So, so Alright, it's been a while. Uh, hopefully you stuck with me for the most part. Thanks, and I will see you later. Or rather, you'll see me later.